Hey, hey, hello there. So from the very beginning of my career in development, I always thought that um, taking care of security should be part of backend developers or DevOps engineers. However, with the evolution of front-end frameworks, more and more functionality is forwarded to the front-end. We have frameworks such as Next or Next, where you can basically build full-stack applications while being a front-end developer. And that is also why I have selected this topic for my today's presentation um, about security in modern web applications and using OWASP as uh, a thing that could rescue you, rescue you if you have issues with security. So as Jen already introduced me, my name is Jakub and I work at Alkai. And uh, about the things that Jen have, hasn't, hasn't mentioned yet, I'm also a Google developer expert in web performance. So if you are interested in, in talking about any of these topics with me, make sure to, to uh, drop me a message. I, I will share the links later on. Um, so after this presentation, uh, you will be a security ninja. Sounds great, doesn't it? But the reality is that it is not possible to become a specialist or ninja in a topic in just 10 minutes. So my idea is to instead make you more aware of the security issues and um, risks that might appear while you, are, you will be developing your uh, web applications. And in my opinion, there is no better place to learn um, about web security and risks and being more aware of them than OWASP and specifically OWASP Top 10. So OWASP Top 10 is a standard awareness document about the most um, critical security risks in modern web applications. And you can see that I have highlighted some uh, words here. So standard awareness document and security risks. Apart from that, it is recognized as the first step towards more secure coding. So it doesn't mean that it will solve all your problems, but it is a solid uh, first step if you are thinking about making your app more secure. So the OVAS website and the OVAS Top 10 website uh, lists a number of issues. And this list of issues is being updated every few years so that you are um, you can keep up to date with the most with the emerging issues that, for example, haven't been there yet. So the risks can be at the same place after a few years, or, or can rise even more or drop if the risk is not that significant anymore. Apart from just the list of issues that you can encounter or you can protect your app against, OWASP also comes with very useful cheat sheets about security that you can use for Node.js, PHP, GraphQL, uh, some frameworks, JavaScript, and so on and so on. So you can check them out. They are really valuable and uh, knowledge source if you're trying to make your app more secure. So let's take a look at some of the security risks. We won't be taking a look at all of them, just a few of them that I have selected. So let's start with the general uh, injections. So injections. Um, we have like cross-site scripting, we have SQL injections. You might be thinking that um, modern websites are protected against this SQL injections, but I have seen few of them, like big ones, which wasn't protected against it. So I still believe that we should be taking care about this aspect as well. So the idea of injection is that the attacker or hacker tries to send some malicious code to the application so that the new users who are using your, your application as a regular users, they will get this malicious code. And for example, some data will be leaked from their accounts. Going further, we have attacks or risks such as uh, DOS or DDOS, which are denial of service or distributed denial of service. So the idea of this attack is to basically uh, send a huge load of requests to your application so that it stops working and it doesn't work anymore, can't handle more requests. Uh, so for that, attacker can use uh, devices called zombie devices, which ba will basically spam your application trying to, to overload it. Very interesting uh, attack that appeared a few years ago. It's called dependency confusion. And it means that basically you are trying to fetch a package from a registry that should be private, but 
by a mistake, you are not fetching the package from this private registry. You are fetching the package from the public registry. And these packages are usually named almost the same or even the same as the packages in the private registry. So because of that, you can fetch a package that doesn't do what you want it to do. And instead, what it, it could do, it, it could do something called reverse shell, which basically allows someone else to do commands on your computer. And you might be thinking that this is strange uh, risk, but uh, the person who discovered this issue discovered also that the affected companies for this particular attack were companies such as Netflix, Facebook, PayPal, um, Tesla, and so on and so on, so pretty big ones. And the last one, misconfigured browser. So we as developers can configure our browser to um, be protected against certain issues. So for example, we can say that we only accept the HTTPS connection. We don't allow uh, certain features such as microphone to be enabled, or we only allow to fetch resources on our website from certain domain or from certain website. So that was general about security risks, just a few of them, and the OFAS in general. And now let's move into how we can make Vue and Next apps more secure. Because as John mentioned, I'm part of the Next team as well. I'm quite active in this community. And that is why I have created something, a project called Next Security, which is basically a Next module that allows Next users to automatically configure the Next app to follow OVASP uh, recommendations for uh, headers, for other security risks. So this module comes with several features. So we have uh, security headers, we have um, request size and write limiters to protect against these DDoS attacks. We have cross-site scripting validation for those injections. We have cores, we have C C CSRF, protection, cross-site request forgery, allowed HTTP methods, and many, many more. Next security by default works with server-side applications to, to, to support all the concepts here. However, if you have a static application like SSG, you can still use the uh, res response headers. So you, you still get something, even though you're using a static application. So let me go quickly into the demo to show you how it works. So we have like a simple Next application with Next welcome component. When we inspect it, we see this um, page. And when we go to the network tab and we inspect this doc, we see that in here we have these response headers and there are just a few of them. So what will happen when in the Next config, we will add the new module Next security is that right now the, the our next application will be configured with the solid and secure default config um, that follows OVASP recommendations. So when we refresh the page and we go to doc, right now you can see that there is much more headers here configured. So we have permissions policy, we have content security policy, and many many more. Um, apart from just the headers, as I mentioned, we have different functionalities. So let's imagine that as a parameter, I want to pass some malicious code such as script. And what will happen then that this cross-site validation will trigger and it will block this request automatically for us to protect us against such a malicious code. So this is like the default config, which is strict to follow OVASP recommendations. However, I always believe that a good package or a good code, um, good project needs to be configurable. So what next the community comes with is with the config that you can overwrite. So let's imagine that we want the um, security header and we want the specific header XXSS protection to have a global value of one, because by default, it has zero. We can do it like so. And when we inspect the browser, but not with this malicious code in here, we can see 
just below that right now this X XSS protection is one. We can configure all the headers here, but we can also configure other uh, functionalities of the module. So for example, we can configure here the rate limiter. And the rate limiter allows us to also pass the tokens per interval. And I will set it to five and interval to let's say 10 seconds. So what, it, what this means is that from now on, when I will try to spam many requests to our application, let's say more than five, I should be blocked just like this with the response four to nine and too many requests. Apart from that, I can also disable certain functionalities if I don't want them. So for example, I don't want this XSS validator and I guess sent it to false. And as Next allows you to modify almost everything in your app, not just global, but also per root. So we can also configure it like this. So we can pass root rules. And in here we can say, for example, that we have a secret root where we want this um, security and we want the header of this X XSS protection and we want it to set to zero. And for example, we don't want this X is validator there and we don't need the rate limiter as well. So we can configure all that in the next security. And uh, this is like the current version, but we are also working on the new version. And for that, I would like you to check the uh, app Barosham slash next security if you're interested in seeing this module and what it can do for you. Uh, if you like the experience, make sure to, to leave it a start. And from, uh, as I mentioned, we are working on many new features for the upcoming version two. And from this point, I also want to shout out to great contributors of the module. Uh, recently, very, very active Sebastian and uh, Galactic Hypernova. The guys are killing it. But as you can see, there are only quite a lot of contributors. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about it and wanted to give them a solid shout out. That will be it from my side. If you are interested in learning more about security, about web performance, about Next or anything else, make sure to, to drop me a message on um, Twitter, X or Dev2. Uh, I'm named, named there at Jacob Andrzejewski. I also have a YouTube channel called Jacob Andrzejewski as well. The only difference is the GitHub where my name is at Paroshem. Uh, that will be it from my side. Thanks for having me, and I wish you a great uh, rest of the conference.